Hello, hello, welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you are new to the show, this is a place where, on a, say, weekly basis, sometimes more than once a week, I delve into a story of HP Lovecraft and um, gradually working my way through his complete fiction. Today's short story is The Hound, written in 1922, first published in 1924 in Weird Tales, the magazine where many of his works were first published. The narrator and his friend St. John have a mutual interest in collecting items that you would consider to be grotesque or uh, related to the occult. Um, they move in together uh, to a giant uh, old English manor house out on the moors, and in the deepest, darkest sub-basement, they build a museum to house their own forbidden items. And they have this obsession, this mutual obsession for this type of, uh, of re we'll call it research. Um, but uh, it eventually descends all the way into um, going so far as grave robbery. Uh, on one occasion, they rob a 500-year-old grave in Holland, and uh, the grave's occupant... Uh, who is said to have had similar interests as these men and to have died under strange circumstances. Uh, in, his, in his grave is a pe peculiar item, an amulet featuring a strange um, half-dog, um, half-bat creature. And they take the amulet home with them. <laughs> uh, even before they manage to, to snatch the amulet, uh, they begin to like swearing that I hear a hound baying in the distance. Uh, when they get at home, that baying follows them, and then also with it comes strange occurrences in their secluded house. They hear footsteps that shouldn't be there. They hear doors being knocked on when nobody is there. And then it escalates until one day when St. John is walking home. Uh, he is brutally uh, torn apart by a creature and, of course, this sound of the baying hounds is um, there to accompany it then. Uh, sort of, um, you know, distraught by this occurrence, the narrator, he decides that, you know, I've got to take this amulet back to Holland, to where it came from, and to free myself from this curse. Well, when he's on his way there, he gets robbed of the amulet, and all the robbers are found later uh, brutally butchered. Uh, to satisfy his own curiosity, he does go back to the churchyard. He uh, digs up the grave, and there he finds the grave's occupants, but he has the uh, the amulet back around his neck, and he's also seems to be... Um, uh, maybe he's morphed into the creature, or maybe he was the creature, but he certainly... Um, there's some connection between the two that is not quite clear. And um, the narrator... Uh, you know, he covers the grave back up, he flees from the, uh, from the churchyard and um, basically declares that having seen all of these horrors, uh, this is likely um, his suicide letter and that um, he can't stand to live with what he's done and with what he's seen. Alright guys, so that is the plot in a nutshell. I think um, the main thing about this little short story is that it feels like Edgar Allan Poe. It just sort of has that... Um, slightly more subdued sort of 19th century vibe um, that you would find familiar in Poe, whereas a lot of Lovecraft's work is far more explicit and um, far more, I would say, challenging. So it sort of, sort of has like a more of like an old school literary vibe to it. Um, aside from the fact that they do mention for the first time the Necronomicon. Um, uh, in this case, uh, it is said that they recognize the creature on the amulets from their reading of the Necronomicon. And as you'll see as you continue your own journey through H.B. Lovecraft, um, that seems to be the case on many occasions where you know people were stupid enough to read that accursed book and something they learn or see um, comes back to bite them in the ass. Um, you know, that said, you know, his story, it, it lacks all that epic scale of Lovecraft, um, even while, um, referencing some of his other greater works. Um, it's, it's not a story that's gonna, like, shape your life. It's not a story that's gonna, like, inspire somebody to become a horror author, I think. Um, but it's still just a good, sort of, uh, insular, isolated tale 
that would be great to read on a dark and stormy night. And for that reason, um, actually it's, it's not night, but it is dark and stormy. Um, I, I quite enjoyed it, and I think that I would enjoy reading it again, because it only took like 20 minutes. So, <laughs> Alright guys, uh, those are my thoughts on The Hound, written by H.P. Lovecraft. I will be back in a couple of days with another review for you here on Let's Talk. Uh, I hope this has been entertaining. If not, uh, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, and keep it creepy.